those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Tony Brown. And for those of you who don't know where you are, that's got them more. This is a little song a friend of mine in uh, Belize, wrote this song. His name is Albert Gale. It's just a little nice. Most of my life with my grandfather and my mom and occasionally my uncle or aunt or somebody, but it was a very large immediate family. My mother got me into music as a child and um, my grandfather was into music, everybody was into music. My cousin, uh, whose name was Babe, he got me playing guitar. His friends and they needed somebody to sing, so I never ended up playing with them. Singing R&B, Wilson Pickett, Martha and Vandellas, Temptations, Impressions. Reggae music, of course, had its great period of floundering in the late 60s in Jamaica, came to the United States through Great Britain, basically, in the 1970s. Reggae came into my life around 1973-74. I was real drawn to the social message and the political message of reggae music outside of the constant flooding of, of ganja, you know, there was things that made it more important, the message of, of uh, what the music was trying to say. The great thing about the reggae that was created by Bob Marley and Third World and Burning Spear, it's eternal music. Its sound will remain as fresh to anybody who encounters it for the first time. I got to go see Bob Marley play, I think it was in 73, at uh, The Quiet Night in Chicago. And that was, uh, that was also uh, the point when I just completely dove in to reggae, because I got to hear Bob play, and it was like $3 to get in. As far as people that created an impact on the world, nope, nobody's was Bob and that was that. In the early 80s, there were more venues, a lot more venues that people could play, which had a lot to do with the drinking age. It had to do with the uh, presence of campus area clubs that could count on bringing in mid-level national acts, providing venues for Tony Brown to open for Jamaican reggae acts of the sort that very rarely play in Madison today. The scenes changed. 
clubs had built in crowds. People went to some place because they always had good music. It was known. There was um, a different whole group of people in Madison that really supported live music and and uh, there was a scene happening. You know, it was the beginning of the music scene. Over the years, with the influx of people from the East Coast and from where, wherever, um, a lot of, and with the cost of living, a lot of townies or people who were in the scene can't, couldn't afford to keep up with the progress of the town. Madison has never acknowledged its minority population, its minority uh, people, culture uh, at all. It's not part of the town's psyche, which is peculiar. There's no interest in, in even marketing the black audience in this town for live entertainment. Uh, no one directs marketing at getting uh, Latino people, uh, Asian people out. I've been drawing forever, but I never painted. I was scared of painting. My friend Steve Stone kept ridiculing me and, and hassling me until I finally tried doing it and I liked it. Painting has showed me that how much possibilities I have playing. One of my worst mistakes in painting might be one of my best flares of creativity in that time period. And the same thing with playing. I might really screw up playing and all of a sudden like, everybody's going nuts. somebody like Tony Brown, uh, the vibration stays the same.